What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Monday, January 22nd, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, 2023, the year the renewables bubble burst. Next up, California industry faces cash crunch amid policy change. Next up on the menu, energy bills must rise to pay for net zero, according to Siemens Energy Boss. <laughs> Yikes. Next up, this one's frigid or cold. I mean, scores dead as frigid conditions ravage the United States. This is a CBS article. Um, then I will take over and cover a little bit of the oil and gas finance, quickly talking about what happened to oil prices on Friday, and then quickly cover rig counts and a look ahead to the coming week. But before we do that, guys, as always, thank you for joining us here on this gorgeous Monday. Um, I'm Michael Tanner. This is Stuart Turley. I'm going to go ahead and let you kick it off, Stu. All right. Hey, let's start off with our first article here, dude. Uh, 2023, the year the renewables bubble burst. Michael, it's been, I've never seen this much animosity towards renewables uh, mm-hmm. coming up. I mean, and A, renewables are not sustainable, but let's go ahead and take a look at this article. It's pretty crazy. Why did energy, clean energy, take the biggest hit? Uh, wind and solar are more exposed to cost of capital and interest rates. Oh. Well, first off, why is that? It's you got to take out debt to use it. Oh, yeah. Oops. And cash flow. Oops. And here's the other thing. Are characterized up front by capital expenditure with low operating costs. Hogwash. This one I disagree with. Solar PV cost jumped up 23% from 2022 to 2023. Wow. There was also a slowdown in the secondary market. Um, a 71% drop in transactions between investors and developers. Part of this was due to the horrific backlog of regulatory problems. What's let's, interesting is I think let's let's stick on this secondary market. Why is this important? Why is the secondary market important? Well, because the secondary market is where people like, I mean, not me and you, Stu, but businesses who aren't necessarily in the development space can now have an opportunity to invest. Basically, let's say, Stu, you and I have a company. Me and you you sell shares directly to one of our friends, family, or fools. Okay? They give us some money. If they're friends with us, they are fools. They are fools. Okay? Then they have a stock certificate. Right. Quote, unquote. A secondary transaction is them taking the fools taking that sec that stock uh uh for or you know stock certificate and selling it to somebody else. That's called the secondary market, which is what is that? That's the free market valuing that stock certificate. Think about yep. it. me and you convince somebody to give us a hundred grand, we give them ten thousand shares. That's us really selling them. It's, it's why we joke right. the friends, family, and fools round when you raise money. Um, who, who invests in small businesses? Friends, family, fools. But the secondary market is a much more indicative of what I would call the free market optimization of finding an optimal price for something, aka pricing securities correctly. Primary markets, there can be arbitrage opportunity. So when you see secondary markets collapse, what does that mean? There's no market for anything. The original primary transaction was so overpriced that now there's not even a secondary market for people right. like, you know, for example, who uh, uh, the Carolina Panthers uh, owner, David Tepper, where did right. he make all his money? Junk bonds. What are junk bonds? Secondary market transactions, buying up debt of certain companies that was issued to other that was issued by banks and are now being traded on the open market. Those guys see arbitrage opportunities to come in and purchase. There's none of that going on here. I I I I don't mean to harp on it, but I thought this was the most interesting part uh, and and analysis in this article. I love what you're saying because I missed right over that. I mean, I just it went right over both of my ears. Uh, great job. Uh, did you just get another score on the game? No, I was just signifying that. Oh, oh, yeah. Right well, over your head. Yeah. You can't even, it, 
Okay, let's go to the next part. Well, no, I think it's important because they also talk about what's on the horizon for 2024 in this article. That was where I was going. And when you talk about this, uh, through although the investment sediment has changed and fossil fuels in the meantime have become somewhat fashionable again as energy security has been reprioritized, the energy transition and investment into clean energy has not slowed down. I disagree. It's about to take a hammer in the back of the head. U.S. $1.7 trillion was invested into clean energy in 2023, 65% more than into fossil fuels. Um, uh, Wood McKenzie expects 710 gigawatts uh, of new wind and solar capacity to be built across Europe by 2030. I disagree with that totally. I think that as we come back around into this, people are done and they have got to get some more affordable um, uh, energy. Here's my prediction, Michael. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen and energy storage. I believe that hydrogen is going to be the next big carbon capture and hydrogen is going to push um, uh, solar and wind off on the side. Solar and wind are now being documented. Everybody's running away from it. Everybody's going to be running to hydrogen, even though I don't think it's ready for prime time yet. But carbon capture and carbon taxes is where wealth distribution is going to be big in 2024. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it, it's clear the renewables, the and but. I think what's, what I like about this article is it shows specifically why the renewables bubble burst. What happened in 2023? The Fed stopped 0% interest rates. The era of ZERP, no more. <laughs> Much like the Airbnb. The- no zero and no zero dollar for you. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I, I can tell you firsthand examples of people who I know in the real estate business who had a strategy that was based upon 0% interest rates. Well, when you can't go out and refinance your property, whether you're a real estate investor or whether you're a huge capital developer, well, guess what? You're you're in big trouble. It's it's an interesting reason. One of the reasons why the the the, the shale boom and bust was so different was because sure there was a, a decent amount of debt that was lost because there was a bunch of debt raised money uh, drilled into these unproductive wells, but there's a lot of equity. There was a lot more equity destroyed in the oil and gas business we're in the renewables business it's all debt there's no real equity being put into this because it's so easy to get financing for renewable energies every bank wants to go out and finance an offshore wind farm or right. you now offshore wind is probably holding up the best comparative to on onshore solar and onshore wind those two have taken a huge hit in terms of uh um uh equity or excuse me debt implosion so it really the, the story for renewables that is that the, it's not the technology necessarily that's failing. It is, but really what's happening is the financing behind it has collapsed because it's not profitable. Right. And plus uh, there's about 19 other things on there, but Hey, let's roll to the next one. Uh, California solar industry faces cash crunch amid policy change. Listen to this, Michael. 63% of solar installer members in California are facing cash flow issues following a new policy that reduced homeowner incentives. Holy smokes. Part of this is because of the new incentives, but also because of the grid and how it's being paid, the uh, balancing and who's paying what. Rooftop solar system sales have plummeted by 85% compared to the previous year. Uh, the downturn in the green energy sector is expected to persist well beyond into 2024. Um, the new policy reduced the incentives. Let's come down here. We're worried a lot about the next two months. We think a lot more fallout may be coming. Yes, thank. Sixty-three percent of of four hundred solar installers have cash flow issues. Yeah, that, that's not good. That's an underlying market problem, and they point out again consumer demand. And it's because the consumers and how they're going to be refunded or saving money 
it's a whole nother big issue coming around the corner. Hey, Miss Producer, can you quickly throw up this this chart, the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF? I, I look at this, Stu. You're talking oh, yeah. at the beginning of 2020. After we 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 see the COVID drop, right? You see that right. early COVID drop as you roll in from 2019 to 2020. Right. Then all of a sudden, throughout 2020, you saw. I mean, really, it quadrupled in in value over right. really a year period. Why? Zero percent interest rates, huge amount of government spending. Everybody was all about trying to spend. You know, we gotta pump money to the economy. Pump money to the economy. Since 2021, the ETF has now fallen back to its original, almost pre-COVID levels. Wow! What does that tell you? It means Listen, it... things aren't working properly. The markets are not operating efficiently. It's the clearest sign of this stuff. You, you know, we have all this anecdotal evidence. You know, Stu and I talk about wind farms don't work. He drives by uh, a, a solar p- farms. They're not working. That's all anecdotal evidence. What these last two articles are showing us is market data. The free sure. market is telling us this isn't working. Oops. Run away. Run away. Okay. This one is a little bit different, Michael. When you take a look at the title, energy bills must rise to pay for net zero, says Siemens Energy Boss. And I'm like, like they haven't risen enough? You can guess who added that one. But here, let's go through this. Siemens lost billions on offshore wind. They have, but he is saying something different here. Um, Joe Kayser, chairman of the Siemens Energy, suggested higher energy bills were inevitable as turbine makers grapple with huge losses, forcing them to pass their costs on to consumers. Um, I believe that for a while, customers need to accept higher pricing. Mm -hmm. And then there might be innovation about the weight of the blades and other efficiency methods. But the point is, if there's no profit pool in an industry, why should that industry innovate? Oh, again, the market at work. Who's going to innovate if there's no profits? And there isn't. And it's so the the world part of this, Michael, is the world is busted, broke. Mm-hmm. We are broke. We have been printing money mm-hmm. and, until it's now no longer capable. The ink is now gone. So listen to this. Inflation has also led to the cancellation of many offshore wind projects. 15 gigawatt worth of projects were canceled or postponed last year, uh, which provided electricity more than 12 million homes. Wow. Yeah, I mean, for needing customers to accept higher pricing, that's a tough ask, and that oh. it, it it can be asked. It's not that you can't ask and raise your prices. That you know, Industries have done that before. The problem is when it comes to something as basic as energy, people start asking the question, well, wait a second here. Why okay. is why is my next-door neighbor paying this? Well, exactly. he's using natural gas. Here's This one's critical. I think the net zero targets are realistic, but they come at a cost, Mr. Kaiser says. You need to stick by the facts at some point, even though facts sometimes may not be like. He also added, there is a governed by a uh, triangle of reliability, affordability, and sustainability, but sustainable and affordability may conflict. Well, you cannot call wind and solar sustainable without printing money. And this energy thread we're talking about displays it all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You have to remember, guys, Mr. Uh, the Chairman Kaiser, um, or Mr. Kaiser, he's a Siemens lifer, joined the company in 1980, was also the CEO from 2013 to 2021. He's got his hand in all of this. He's got his hand in this. So what's funny is now that he's the chairman, he's not in the big top dog anymore. He's in the, you know, the chairman is the top dog, but he's also not really the top dog. You can get moved around. Oh, now there's a problem with renewables. Where was that the last eight years? It's hilarious. He's the guy that put him in this situation. Oh, I know. And I'm when all that people. government money was coming in, all that debt was being financed. What did they have their money? Money, please. Money, please. 
But I think this is coming around because I had been on the podcast and I believe it was Ben that I was interviewing in 2022. And I said, there is going to be a great awakening in 2023. I said it, I've got the tape. Now I'm sitting here going, how come we're in 2024 and I was wrong? Well, no, I wasn't. 2023 was really the year it was coming around and everything else. Let's talk about the realistic last article here scores dead as frigid conditions ravage the U.S. This is from CBS. So we know it has to be true if it's from CBS. Uh, 89 people have died in weather-related incidents across the U.S. in the last few days. Wow. Tens of million. Tens of million across the U.S. again, bitterly cold. Um, how cold? Uh, Chicago, minus 30. Um, Texas, Alabama, 20 degrees. Uh, where is it? Deaths have been reported in Illinois, Pennsylvania, Mississippi, Washington. Uh, when you sit back and take a look, people can print money. Cold kills. Mm -hmm. There, There's so much more death from cold weather than there is hot weather. Um, anyway, so if you keep printing money, people are going to die. Well, and, and the, the big issue with the cold we know is the EVs. They want to move us all to an electric vehicle. <laughs> Everybody's got to have an electric vehicle. You know, not because it's saving the environment, but because there's a chip in it that'll that'll drive you to the ga the, the the police station when you're you know when your social credit score drops too low, it'll just drive or you, you. Or you put something on Twitter, you know, and says, "Hey, uh, did Joe Biden just say this?" <laughs> well, Twitter will be fine. It's every it's uh, threads is where you don't want to be posted on Facebook threads. Oh, okay. Uh, but don't worry, if you're posting on threads, nobody's seeing it, so you're good. If if you're actually posting on threads, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. But I, I saw multiple articles. Charging stations stopped working. You know, all, nobody knows how to operate, you know, these EVs in the cold. You know, part of what these manufacturers have done is kind of, they make you kind of like, I was reading the article where nobody knows that you need to kind of like, it's almost like half turn your key into an EV to like, warm it up you have to do that for 10 minutes before you can actually turn the car on for oh yeah yeah there's like these well because they've got these batteries that are they're encased and if you if you you got to almost like turn it on to warm it up and then once it's there then you could so imagine having to wait 10 20 minutes just to, from the time you quote turn your car on until you can actually turn your car on. but nobody's supposed to do that because we live in a world where you can just stick your key in a gas car boom fire it up that sounds like my wife <laughs> but yeah I, you better take me to dinner for that <laughs> but no it's 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 pretty crazy and you know you know oregon they had forty five thousand people left without power as a result of these storms and it's places like tennessee where they're not used to this type of weather where you saw most of the fatalities oh yeah i i mean the the, the whole thing is the grid, and I get to talk to Meredith Angwin uh, today, so this is really a cool thing. Again, I just love uh, talking mm -hmm. uh, grid with all these great people. So anyway, off to you, dude. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, before we dive into finance, guys, we'll go ahead and, and pay the bills here. All, all the news, as always, the news and analysis um, that you hear is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com. You can go ahead and hit the description below for all of the timestamps, all of the links uh, to the articles. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed with everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com for our data news combo product. Uh, really pushing that hard um, here in the net, here this quarter and, and Q2. So we're really excited about things there. You can email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com. And as always, www.energynewsbeat.com. As far as you know, overall markets on on, on Friday, Stu, we saw you know Nas, you know we saw S and P five hundred actually up about one point two percentage points. Um, Nasdaq uh, up about one point five percentage points. Um, U.S. Uh, U.S. thirty year yields down about a quarter of a percentage point. Ten year yields down about half a percentage uh, point. Dollar index stays fairly flat. We saw crude oil 
down about a full percentage point or about 70 cents. Uh, uh, currently check, uh, currently settling 73.25. We saw Brent oil down about a quarter of a percent or three quarters of a percentage point, 79.06. Um, couldn't quite finish up below that 80 mark. We saw about a uh, 17 cents drop off natural gas, which is about 6.6 percentage points. This is all the way back down at $2 and 55 cents, you know, on the natural to stay on the natural gas train. That's mainly due to uh, warmer weather that's expected later this week throughout all of those places that we talked about to kind of go back Back to what that article that CBS talked about. It is to note that as the freeze happened and rapid warming then happens, there's an increased chance of floods. So be careful out there. But um, that's part of the reason why, again, we've seen natural gas prices uh, continue um, to stumble here. We did see the EIA, the IEA lift its demand growth forecast. Um, they do expect a well-supplied market. Part of the reason why we probably will see oil, um, we probably will see oil prices up a little bit is mainly due to um, that cold weather that flew last week. I expect kind of a Monday, Tuesday, a little bit of a support because we saw about 30 percent um, of North Dakota oil output dropped mainly due to that coal, about 280, 300,000 barrels a day. So we'll, we'll probably see a small tick there. Um, but, you know, good to see a weekly gain. Um, we also did see rig counts, Stu. We saw rig counts up um, in the United States, plus one to uh, uh, 200, uh, 620, but that's still down about 151 from the prior year. Uh, Canada saw an increase of 10 rigs. Internationally, they continue to shed rigs, 955. That's down 23 from the week over week. So, you know, rig counts are, are, are you know, mainly hanging out, uh, you know, at that 620, 625 low, it's going to be interesting to see where things go from here. Um, you know, as we look ahead to this week, Stu, I, I think, you know, from an oil price perspective, you, you know, it all it takes is something in the Middle East for things to go haywire. You know, I think with these, you know, with the things that the, you know, our, our favorite friends over, at, you know, our favorite analysts over at the IEA, you know, they continue to, you know, push, you know, well-supplied market, well-supplied market. We will see how that data continues to roll out. What are you watching for next week specifically? Well, uh, a couple things. Uh, Iran has started a few things, uh, even without having to go through the hooties and the blowfish. Uh, so they're even uh, just pushing their uh, delegates uh, aside and doing it. So um, I got I got a call with Lindsey Graham here in a little bit to just see how bad he is. Um, but just kidding. I, yeah, his lobotomization is gone. Oh, man, I hope so. That, that is one squirrel. But, uh, you know, when you sit back and think, you know, uh, there is so much. And you and I have always been saying, why is oil $200 right now? I mean, I don't get it. I can't even begin to. I, mean, I know why oil is not $200. I know you're wondering because you thought it would be. No, I never said 200. <laughs> Sorry, 150, 150, 199. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I'd also be failed to remiss that we are we're getting geared up for NAEP. Um, if any of you oil and gas folks are headed down to NAEP um, February 7th through the 9th, come check us out. Booth 1957. We'll get that um, in the comments below. Booth 1957. We're going to be doing podcasts. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. Some live deal evaluations with some of our sponsors, uh, specifically Well Database, John Farrell, their CEO. We're going to be sitting down, breaking down live deals. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out kind of how that all works. Actually got to get some stuff ready for that tonight. So um, really looking forward to that, but check us out. Go ahead and email us um, questions at energynewsbeat.com or nape at sandstone-group.com. It'll all be in the description below if you guys want to get hooked up, but we're really looking forward to that. That'll be, yeah, it's going to be really fun. That'll be a big time. I'm looking forward to it. Got lots of great things coming around the corner. Yeah, absolutely, guys. But with that, we'll let you get out of here. Start your week. We hopefully there's only you know one or two meetings. You know, you know, hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully, you know, you got your reports ready to go. You're ready to get just blasted by whatever happened over the weekend because we know you know you know something happened over the weekend. So stay strong, guys. We'll see you through the end of the week. Um, you'll stay with us. Energynewsbeat.com for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.